raw mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> and man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back on the way to the first job of the day. We got three different jobs to be at today. And these are full rehabs, full flips. There's a lot going on. Been installing a lot of cabinets, doing a whole lot of different stuff, and I am just burnt all the way out. My vacation is coming up here soon. I'm so looking forward to that. In less than two weeks, I get to take two weeks away from that. This, I do a whole lot more of this, which is YouTube. So today's video, this is what we're gonna talk about. This has been playing on my mind. What happens if the cell you're in or your cellmate causes trouble with somebody else and they get the idea? That they're gonna run up in that cell. They're gonna run up in my house. They're gonna run up in your house. That is a big no no. Let me explain this to you. You may think that when a man's in jail or prison, it's just a cell. No, that is your temporary home. It will be treated as so, it will be respected. Anything other than that has to be dealt with accordingly. You don't get to choose who they put in the cell with you. Every Once you get to prison, you might have a little say-so, but in the jail, or when you first get to prison, or you're new in the pod, they're gonna put you in the cell with who they want you to be in there with. Your cellmate goes to the hole, they're gonna take the new guy, or somebody else, and they're gonna throw them in the cell with you. What happens when this guy has a trouble starter? Dude show up at the door and just decide that, well, they wanna beat that guy up. Oh, they're gonna run up in that cell, they're gonna do something. No, you're not. Today, we're gonna get into that. I've had a bunch of different situations where cellmates of mine found themselves in a jam and somebody showed up at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, what's up? I'm about to run up here and handle my business real quick. No, you're not. That's what we're doing today. When trouble comes knocking, tough guys showing up at the door when your cellmate has pressure when the next guy thinks he's just going to disrespect the place that you live in <laughs> got a short little bit of information after this intro stay tuned for the video you know how to see it you know how to live it so let's relive it so i've been putting a lot into what's coming next as far as my life goes I have been flipping houses now for over seven years. Thank you for all the kind words yesterday on my eight year anniversary. Yesterday, July 10th, made eight years that I've been free. And though I'm far from perfect and I'm far from who I want to be, Lord knows that I try. But the more of today's story is, I am tired. I'm burnt out on flipping houses. We have flipped hundreds of houses. We have flipped 11 homes since January. In seven months, we have flipped 11 homes from beginning to end. That's a lot of houses. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, and it all falls on my shoulders. I've lost my drive for it. I've lost the love for it. I love getting up, going to work every day, but I've lo I have lost the love for flipping homes. Just the stress that comes with it, the people thinking they know everything when they know nothing about what's going on. It can take a toll on you. Don't quit your day job. I am one of the YouTubers that you will notice still works. Do I make money off YouTube? Yes. Do I make good money off YouTube? Yes. Do I continue to work? Yes. Why? Because I know in this lifetime, nothing lasts forever. If you want it, you have to go get it. If you want to keep it, you have to continue to fight for it. So I'm letting the construction go, but I'm not letting the construction go until the next company is up and running. The next company being tow trucks, repos, things of that nature. Over the past year, I've met a lot of different people, people that own nightclubs, businesses, you name it. People park their cars there illegally. You cannot just park where you want to park. People break down on the side of the road and then, hey, there's the winter time. Tow trucks are a big thing around here, but there's a shortage. There's a problem with 
being able to get in touch with somebody, the price is being reasonable, and them getting to you so that you don't have to sit on the side of the road in the blistering ass heat or the freezing winter for nine hours straight while you wait on Jimmy Bob to show up with his record. That's where we come in. I've done enough saving, credit scores where it should be. It's time to make a change. So in the coming months, you are gonna see this change. We're gonna be going into records, tow trucks, repos, flatbeds, trailers, snatch and grabs, all that good stuff. That's where we're going next. I bought a car lift, hydraulic car lift Friday that was delivered at the warehouse Friday. Give y'all a second to check this out. This is a car lift. It was just delivered Friday and has to be reassembled. It's hydraulic. That right there controls all the lifts, all these hoses, plates, all that stuff goes back on. And this is a Space Saver 9000. We have another one coming today, a second car lift coming today. And that's just for the fixing the cars and putting them out there aspect of it. The first part is the towing aspect of it. So I'm currently looking into what I have to do to get licensed into towing. I have a second one coming this week. We get left with a lot of cars. People do not come to get, cannot afford to get. So we're stuck with them. I have mechanics that will fix these cars. They will be auctioned off. They will be resold. I don't want your car. Come get your car, pay your bill, get your car out of storage. When people don't, they won't. We get stuck with them. Then comes the aspect of selling cars that I'm stuck with. So before I can sell them, I must fix them. That is my weekly update. There is more, but I will save that for the next video. Let's get into today's video. Hey man, it's real out here. See we in a red Raiders hat today. This is one of my favorite hats. This hat and the blue Raiders hat. Reason I say it's real out here, man. I just seen a dude on a 10 speed going down Jeff Davis Highway with two rims, like car rims, on the handlebars, leaned forward, holding the rims with his chin and a backpack on, headed to the scrapyard, man. If anybody that's ever been caught up in addiction, y'all know why he's headed to the scrapyard. That man is trying to get well this morning. That man is sick, pedaling his ass off. It's hot out here today, and this dude's day is starting off with two rims he's going to scrap that he might get $20 for if he's lucky. The scrapyard's still another five miles away from the direction he was pedaling. That's a rough life. Pray for that dude, man. Pray for anybody caught up in that madness. So I had a cellmate, man. We're just gonna call him by his nickname, Turtle. Dude had like a, a he was a fat boy, but he had like a, a lump on his back. He didn't really have a lump, but the way that his belly was shaped, it made him appear to damn near look like a Ninja Turtle. So dudes, for the minute, I didn't know why they called the dude Turtle. He wasn't originally in my cell. He was originally on the top tier. Then they came in one day and they like to mix things up sometimes. Just come in and move people out of here, move people out of there. And they took my celly and moved him over to another building. So then they're gonna take guys in that pod and stick them in the cells that have one man already so they can have whole entire cells open. They end up sticking Turtle in the cell with me. I didn't know a whole bunch about Turtle except that this dude was always ripping and running. Ripping and running meaning every time you seen him, he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. He'd have parlay tickets trying to make some money. He'd have a, a jacket full of soups. He'd have the honey buns. He'd have all of that stuff on him. He was always making moves. He was a dude that didn't get no help from the outside world. In the prison, he was hustle man, making his moves. They send Turtle down to live in the cell with me. I knew me and Turtle was gonna have problems as soon as Turtle came in the cell, because the first thing Turtle said was, I can't get on the top bunk. What you mean you can't get on the top bunk? I can't get on the top bunk, but then you gonna have to find another cell. I can't get the bottom bunk? Come on, man, stop with the bullshit. You know I tattoo, you know I gotta have that bunk to tattoo, you already know what it is, and you know I'm not coming up off my bottom bunk, man. All right, man, I just mess with you. I get on the top bunk, but that shit works for some people. Ain't gonna work for me, man. Just cause you're a little bit overweight don't mean you can get no privileges. You can't get on the top bunk, get out there, do some burpees, run around for a little bit, shed 30, 40 pounds, then you will have no problem getting on the top bunk. So we got past that whole thing. First thing I didn't like, aside from that, was Turtle was always asking for stuff. 
Now, it's one thing if I'm sitting there eating, I'm not that type of dude, man. If I see you hungry, I'm not just going to sit there and eat in front of you. I'll break you a piece off. I'll break bread. I'll, you know, make sure you're okay. But the problem with Turtle is, is he had stuff. He would hustle stuff up and have it in his locker and it'd take like his shirt and his jeans and cover this stuff up where nobody could see it. And they'd be like, hey, Jay, let me get a soup up off of you. I said, bro, stop playing, man. You got soups. Yeah, but I need them for something. Look, man, you dead. You hustled up soups. You got soups. You got food. But I got to make a move with those. You got those to eat. I mean, when I'm not in here, I come in here. There's a little food wrapper in the trash. So whenever I'm not in the cell, you're eating. But as soon as I come in the cell, it's, oh, I got to use that to do something weird. I can't eat nothing. I leave out the cell. You shut the door. Put the pillow on the door thinking you're taking a poop. So nobody will come up on you. You're sitting there to eat a honey bun. And then throw the evidence, the wrapper, right in the trash. And got the audacity to ask me for my stuff. I can't do it. If I knew he didn't have anything, I'd help him. But the hustle man in prison, which Turtle was one, Jingling was one, Duck was one, these guys, they're not rich, but they're not broke. They've got things that are worth money, whether it be weed, whether it be CDs or TVs off the yard, they've got a good hustle in prison. I wasn't feeling that. Turtle gets this bright idea that he's supposed to get these CDs from one dude. Dude's supposed to be going home and leaving him like over 100 CDs. In prison, that's a come on. You're talking, the time we can still smoke cigarettes, you're talking two packs of CD. That's $10 a CD times 100. That's damn near $1,000 he's going to make off of this. He's telling me this scheme. But to get the CDs, he's got to give this dude like $50 a commissary. So he's going to go store box this commissary get the CDs, sell the CDs, and then pay back the store box. Robin Peter to pay Paul. You don't do that. You don't do anything not knowing if this plan is going to work. Because if it backfires in your face, which it usually does, you're screwed. He goes to the store box, gets all this stuff, these cigarettes, different things. All sales are final. This is not Walmart. When you leave the store box, the guy that has loaned you stuff, you do not get to just say, Hey, man, decided I don't want this. I want to bring it back. Not how it works. He goes to store box and stuff, goes to the guy with the CDs, and the guy tells him, I had somebody send me $100. Send mean their family member sent him $100 straight to his book, screw the commissary, $100. I gave them the CDs. Now, Turtle's stuck with his commissary. He has no means, no way of repaying this man the $100 he wants for the $50 he loaned out. Tries to take the commissary back. Dude's not taking the commissary back. What you mean take the commissary back? Like, type of time as you want, man. You just came over here, gave me this long ass story about this commissary. Now you trying to return it. Man, you better get your goofy ass away from me, man. Y'all look stupid to you or something? Like you don't bring me some, ex dudes are crazy. You brought me some expired honey buns? You done took my good food and tried to bring me some old food? I know the games, man. Get up out of my face, man. You better have my money on store day. Store day is getting closer and closer. Turtle is taking the stuff he's got from this dude and trying to store box it out. He doesn't get no respect. Nobody's going to pay him back. The damn nickname is Turtle. That's dead. Sorry about all the rattling. We're at the job now so I can actually kick back a little bit and talk. One of the things I seen right from the jump that he was doing wrong was store boxing to gang members. All these different little blood dudes are showing up in the cell. Hey, Turtle, what's up, man? They said you got a store box. Let me get this, let me get that. And I'm looking at this dude like, what are you doing? Dudes would roll out and leave a sign up like, oh, what is you doing, man? Oh, I gotta get it, I gotta have a way to get it back, so I'm just gonna store box this stuff out and I'll be able to pay the man back. If I two for three, everything out, I'll have his money. Two for three means I give you two, you bring me back three. Two sodas means you bring me back three. If you're a new guy, I'm gonna give you two and you're gonna bring me back four. But I see the caliber of dudes that are coming to the cell. What Turtle should have done is only store boxed to guys that he was confident he could beat up or guys that if there was any type of pressure, he knew there wouldn't be any pressure. The last thing he should be doing is giving stuff to gang members who are 100% not going to pay him back. He's a little fat white dude named Turtle that has no pull, 
that is not respected, has never put in any work, has never been in any fights, has been in altercations and back down. You hold no weight around here. Don't give those guys anything. Give, them to, give it to other white guys. I hate to say that, but give it to other white guys that are of the same nature as you. They're liable to pay you back. This dude is not going to pay you back. He doesn't listen to me. Any and everybody that comes to the cell, Turtle's giving this stuff to him. Hand it out as fast as he can. In the first two days, everything he's borrowed from the store box, he is now store boxed out. Store day rolls around. I warned him against this. Store day rolls around. Turtle goes and collects little things from the little flunky dudes in there. Little winnings from the parlay tickets. Little stuff he had been selling here. CDs and tapes. And he would get sweatpants and Levi's shirts and jeans off the yard. And he would resell them for an extra pack of cigarettes. And then take that guy his pack and keep a pack. He goes and collects all his little money that these little dudes owe him. And for the most part, they pay him. Now it's time to collect all this money that he's store boxed out. I see him. I come in, I'm working maintenance that day. I went and got my commissary earlier. When they called first call for commissary, I was already over there. I took my bag with me. On commissary day, when I would go to work, I would take this orange net bag your commissary goes with. I would put it in my back pocket. And when we heard them come over the radio, my boss was a maintenance worker. He's a man that wears a green shirt. He's a civilian from the outside world who just works maintenance in the prison. He's not a guard. He has nothing to do with the guard politics. He is a maintenance man. He has a radio because they will radio him. There's an issue here. There's an issue here. Go fix this. Go fix that. You'll hear them say, put seven building on standby for commissary. At which point I tell him, hey, I heard that. I'm going to go grab my commissary real quick. I'll be right back. I go over and I'm usually one of the first or second people to get my commissary. I take my commissary back to the cell. Come in, dude's looking at me like, damn, how'd you get back with your commissary? Hey, man, they called the commissary. Jay came in with his bag. So dudes rush to the front with their bags, right? It's been three weeks since we've been to the store. I go ahead and put my stuff in the cell. I head back to work. At lunchtime, we return back to the pod. We lock down for count. After count, we go eat lunch, and then we go to work early. I come back, and we come back about 30, 45 minutes before count, and everybody in my pod has now went to commissary. Turtle has gone and collected the little things that the other little dudes like him that owe him have now paid him, right? That they owed. All the little blood dudes, different gang dudes, not just bloods. So it's a bunch of different little gang dudes. Saw the opportunity to get some free stuff. Not gonna pay that dude back. He can't fight. You gotta get it out the mud. Get it from the rough. Get it in blood is what we say. I see turtles standing in the doorway. These dudes that went from cell to cell paying guys they owe. But not a single person has come over here and paid him back any of the stuff that he owes that guy on the top 10. I look at Turtle. Turtle stand in the doorway looking stupid. This guy doesn't want just anything. If you borrowed soups, he wants soups back. If you borrowed cigarettes, he wants cigarettes back. You can't go pay him with Dove soap, Dial soap, Irish spring, shampoos, toothpaste, stamps. It's not how it works. Whatever you get is what he wants back unless he gives you a list. I see Turtle looking stupid. Scan the room, look up on the top tier. There stands a very angry man. Everybody has come and paid him. Big ass dude. He's looking around and he's looking down at Turtle. Everybody done brought me my money, but that guy. I've seen that guy collect the money. So this guy's under the impression that guy's got the money. He just don't want to pay him. I go up to Turtle, what's going on, man? Dude's pay your money. Man, the dudes that owe me for like the stuff off the yard paid me, but dudes I store box to ain't kick no bread over, man. Like, I got to go up there and pay. Dude, this is all bad for you. I said, well, you need to go holler at him. What I'm going to say, you need to go holler at him because he's not coming down here to the cell, causing a scene, beating you up, breaking my stuff. You ain't got nothing to value. You're not about to bring that stuff to my doorstep. You need to go up there and holler at the man. Man, if I go up there, he ain't gonna, you know how he gets down, man. That dude's crazy. Like, shouldn't have gotten nothing from him. When somebody tells you something, you need to listen, especially if they've been doing it longer than you have. He had only been in prison maybe two, three years at this point. I've been in here for years, and this is not my first bed. I've been doing this my whole life. I gave you advice, solid, good advice that could have avoided all this trouble you're in now. 
You didn't listen to me. Here you are. Don't look to me to bail you out. I'm going to give you your next advice is carry your ass up and tell that man you ain't got his money and wear whatever comes with it. You know what the man said to me? Man, I think I'm just going to check in. No, you're not. You're not checking in. Because dudes are going to want to know why I stood here and let you check in knowing that you owed him money. He's going to come down here and be like, Jay, how you let the boy check in, man, knowing he owed me money? So you just sat here, watched him pack his stuff, didn't take anything. You're supposed to mess with me. I messed with dude. He's from my city. We have a rapport. Me and him are cool. You're just going to let him pack all this stuff up and leave and owe me like that? What type of time is you on? So you're not checking in, man. What you mean I'm not checking in? Exactly what I said. You're not checking in. You're going to go up there and you're going you to face that man. I see him. He's looking at me. He's looking at Turtle and he's just waiting. Like Something's got to give. He's either going to come down here and beat Turtle up or Turtle's going to go up there and talk to him. Then we'll come to an understanding. Turtle, man, you think he's going to beat me up? I think you need to go holler at him. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, but it's not going to happen in here. And if it does happen in here, then I got a problem with him. When he leaves, I got a problem with you. That's simple. So if you're telling him, you're telling me, you're just going to bring the trouble to the cell, you go ahead and step in the cell, I'll come in the cell, and I'll beat little turtle up, don't want to be the bad guy, not trying to be a tough guy, not trying to be a bully, but these are penitentiary rules, you can't bring this to the house, bro, go handle your business. Man, he makes his way up there. I see him standing there talking to the dude, and dude says, like, I guess telling him, come in the cell and talk to me, don't want other people to know what's going on, so you invite the man in the cell. But usually when somebody invites you in their cell, it's because they're about to put hands on you and uh, there's not a whole lot to be talked about. I watch him step in the cell, he disappears, and you hear the slap, like one of those slaps that echoes around the world. Like you could hear that shit in another country and another part of the prison. It was so loud that all the talking and chaos that was going on amongst the other inmates in the, in the prison and throughout the day room in their cells, it quieted it down. You heard it. He slapped the fuck out of him. You gonna try me? And Turtle comes back out of the cell holding his face. You really wanna try me? I'm the one you wanna try? I tell you what, you gonna have my money next door day with interest or it's gonna happen again. Did you just slap me, bro? The debt's dead. Oh, the debt's not dead. The debt is far from dead. You get my money or next door day you gonna get the same thing, but worse. Turtle comes down to the cell and he has got a slap print on the side of his face that makes him look like one of those damn things from Lord of the Rings. Remember them ogres that had the handprints all over their face? That guy, that's what a turtle looked like. Big ass slap print, like Matumbo's hand on the side of his face, right? Comes in the cell, sits on the bench, tears in his eyes, sniffing it. I said, what's wrong, man? Man, I don't want to do this, man. That man put hands on me, talking about I still owe him. I thought if he put hands on me, that was dead. You should have listened to me, turtle. You should have listened. Okay, so you've got one problem out the way. You don't have to worry about that again until store day rolls around. What you gonna do about all these dudes that owe you, hmm? And by now, everybody's talking, gossiping. Hey man, you know homeboy just slapped the shit out of the turtle? Man, you ain't hear that? So if they wasn't gonna pay you, they're definitely not gonna pay you now because somebody in here just slapped you and you didn't fight. What turtle should have done, regardless of whether he was gonna win or lose, is he should have fought. I say that all the time, and I know that everybody's not going to fight. But once you find yourself in that position, you do not let somebody put their hands on you and not do anything about it. You have no option in the matter but to fight back. You don't just let that man slap you. Slapping somebody, spitting on somebody, telling them to suck my, or calling them a bit. Any of that is the ultimate disrespect. But a slap, a slap hands down is one of the biggest disrespects you can give a man. That's saying you're not even worthy of punching. I'm just gonna open hand slap you like somebody with a female or you know, uh, somebody with a bad charge. What you gonna do about the dudes that owe you money, turtle? Man, I think I'm gonna holler at my people and see if I can reach out to them and maybe they'll send me some money, man, and just let that slide and never store box nobody, nothing else. And I'm gonna holler at dude and see if I can just have my people send him some money. That might work, turtle. That might be your only out. But now we have a problem. You can't be in the cell no more. Because all those dudes know now that they can just take whatever they want from you and that you're not going to do nothing about it. And you represent me. You live in here with me. They're not going to be saying Jay's homeboy, Jay's cellmate, the dude that lives with Jay. My name's not being mixed up in what you done did, Turtle. You can't be in here no more. There's plenty of open cells in here. 
There's a cell over there. There's a cell over there. Shit, there's even one on the top tier with the boy. Man, I can't go live with the boy. You can't live in here, turtle. You're going to go out there. You're going to apply pressure and do what you can to get your money. Win, lose, or draw, you have to go get your money. I'm telling you what you have to do. You still got time laying ahead of you. You still got some years to do. You don't want this to be your name moving forward because this is going to be how the rest of your big goes. What you do right now is going to determine how you live the remainder of your years in here. Are you going to be the guy that got slapped and went and caught some wreck with somebody and fought a couple guys and you got your, your credit back? Or you're going to be the guy that got slapped, let everybody buck on you, and you're the laughing stock of the penitentiary. Well, I'm not built like that to be going to fighting nobody, Jay. I actually think Turtle pooped on himself. It smelled pretty bad in the air. I can't neither confirm nor deny, but from the smell in the cell, I'm going to say that there's a very good chance that when the man slapped him, he might have slipped a little something out. He tells me, I'm not built like that, Jay. I'm going to holler at my people. Whatever the case may be, man. After that, you're going to have to holler at the guards to get moved out of here because you just didn't listen. You're not bringing trouble to my cell. You're not bringing these dudes to my cell because soon enough they're going to think since they didn't have to pay you, they can just come take anything you got. You know it. I know it. Everybody else knows it. Now you're prey and the wolves are coming. He goes and gets on the phone. I see him dialing frantically, trying to get in touch with people. Nobody's answering. This man has been on the phone now 15 minutes just dialing, dialing. Everybody's dealing with the commissary stuff, so the phones are open. Usually them phones are taken, but people aren't worried about the phones right now. They're dealing with the commissary stuff, right? Everybody's looking at Turtle out there on the phone, dialing. I'm standing in the doorway just looking at this dude. Stupid. So stupid. Why wouldn't you listen to me, man? Why did you do this to yourself? Why wouldn't you take my advice? All I was trying to do was help you. You shouldn't be in a situation, but you didn't listen to me. So I can't, you know, I just have to watch it now. He finally gets through to somebody. He's on the phone maybe three, four minutes. I can tell by his demeanor when he comes back to the phone, it wasn't no good. His people told him, we ain't got money to be $150. Who are we sending $150 to? We ain't got no $150 to be. We don't send you money. How do we look sending somebody else money? We didn't put you there. We're not sending you nothing. Do you not remember stealing grandma's TV? Do you not remember stealing the baby's diapers? You don't remember selling the air conditioner in the middle of summertime? We don't mess with you like that. These are all facts. Turtle told me he had stole from his family. He had done things, and they had cut him off. They're not going to help him. He comes back in the cell. I said, what you going to do? He said, what I think I'm going to do, man, is I'm going to holler at the dude in the other pod. I'm going to store a box of stuff from him. I'm going to holler at the dude upstairs, store a box of stuff from him so I can pay him. So now you're going to go from owing him to owing both of them. So now instead of this big dude wanting to slap you, you got both those guys wanting to slap you, and one of them is a gang leader. So you're gonna, he's going to have all his gang members come down here once again to the cell. Bro, you got to roll out the cell. Let the guards know you got to go or I'm going to roll your shit up and throw it out, Turtle. You're not doing this. Trying to bring trouble to the house. Trying to bring trouble to where I live. Because I'm going to have to fight these fights when they show up. The moment they come in this cell and they try to attack you, it's not about you no more. It's about this being my home. It's the equivalent to you having somebody at your house that other people don't like and them showing up and coming through your front door to attack that man. Can't happen. Turtle sticks to his, I'm going to store a box from this dude. I'm going to store a box from that dude, right? Whatever, Turtle, I'm done talking, but you'll do it in another cell. We lock down. Count time is real awkward. He's not saying anything. He's sitting there. I can tell this stuff is weighing heavy on his mind. I'm not saying nothing to him. I watch news, watch my other little daytime shows. I watch while we're waiting for count to clear so we can go to chow. I go to chow. He goes to chow. We all go to chow. We all come out the pod and, at once. And on this day, it was a good tray. If it's a bean train, a lot of times on commissary day, dudes ain't going over there if it's some, some pool crap. But we had hot dogs. Everybody goes for the hot dogs. Who don't love hot dogs, right? It's one of the better trays you're going to get in prison. We're all coming out to Sally Port and cutting through the building, headed to the chow hall, and the sergeant's coming off the elevator. I see Turtle beeline for the sergeant. I'm thinking Turtle's going to go to the sergeant and say, hey, when you get a chance, I need to be moved cells. What's going on? Oh, man, I just, you know, we ain't compatible. You got to move me. Because I done told the man he can't live in here because of his dumb decisions, right? Turtle goes straight to the sergeant in front of everybody. In front of the guy he owes money. In front of this guy, that guy. In front of everybody. and said, hey, Sarge, can I talk to you? The sergeant said, no, nah, I'm headed over to Chow Hall to help with feeding. You can holler at me later. He said, well, I'm checking in. At that point, the guard has to stop. Sergeant stops. Everybody stops and is like kind of being nosy looking at the turtle like, yo, the, the dude just said he's checking in. What do you mean you're checking in? Why are you checking in? 
I can't be in there, man. I fear for my life. Well, you got to tell us. He's saying this in front of everybody. You got to tell us something, man, because uh, you can't just say you fear for your life unless you tell us what's going on. Man, I owe people money, man, and they going to hurt me. Oh, no, no, you can't check in like that. Carry your scary ass on the chair. We're not letting you check in. Hey, look, man, we'll talk about it when we get upstairs, man. I owe people money, man. We'll talk about it means I'll tell on somebody. I'm going to tell you what's going on. Now, because of this idiot, some moron they stuck in the cell with me, I got to head back to the cell. This officer is going to, he's a sergeant. He's going to radio the other officers and say, hey, inmate such and such is, is pulling a bitch move and checking in. Yeah, I need y'all to go to sell such and such and get all his property uh, because he's scared. They're going to come to my cell, and if I'm not there, they're going to start going through stuff trying to identify what's his. Then they'll eventually call for me to come over there and tell them what's his. But in the meantime, they've done shook my cell down. They done went through my cell. They done found things I shouldn't have. Razor blades, other odds and ends, items I bought off the yard that I didn't buy through property, I didn't buy off commissary. I've got to go clean up shop. I turn around, I tell the guard that's in the booth, hey, let me back in the pod. I can't go to child now. No hot dogs for Jay. Remember, everybody loves hot dogs. No hot dogs for Jay today. I've also got in the back of my mind, he just checked in in front of everybody. So dudes that he might owe money, no, their only window, their only opportunity to get their money is right now. If they can beat them guards and beat me to that cell, they got a chance of getting in there, running up in my spot, and taking his stuff, potentially taking my stuff. Oh, hell no. I turn around, I head straight back into the pod, right? Go to the cell, I commence to bag and all turtle stuff up and sitting it by the door. Like I told you, in the back of my mind, dudes are coming. They know he just pulled some, some rat stuff. They know he just pulled a check-in move, a coward move. He just ran to the police. He's going to tell on people. People are here going to get jammed up because he's got to give information. At this point in time, they would not allow you to go to the hole at your own free will unless you told something. And right there in front of the people, he told the guards, I'll talk to y'all when we get upstairs, which means I'll tell y'all what y'all want to know. Just get me away from these guys. I'm scared. That was the end of it. Guards came down there, they got Turtle's bags. Crazy enough, this is what's crazy. I never found out what happened to Turtle. I never really could confirm nor deny whether Turtle had pooped on himself that day. But I'm talking to Big Lance this morning and I mentioned the name. And Lance is like, no, I know, dude. I was at another camp with him. He was doing the same thing. I remember hearing about him getting slapped and pooping on himself up Greensville. Yeah, he was my cellmate when that happened. Yo, that's so crazy. Remember I told y'all I could have bailed Turtle out of that situation? But some people, you can't help them because they'll put themselves right back where they were. They will always be where they've always been because of themselves. Turtle was one of those guys. I could have paid his debt, kept him from getting slapped, and it would only been a matter of time before he'd have got slapped anyway. A couple weeks later, he would have just owed people again. Well, sure enough, he transferred from where I was at and ended up where Lance was. I had the same ordeal going on, owing people money, getting beat up. He didn't handle that day the situation I told him you've got to handle. It became the remainder of his bid. It followed him from that prison to that prison and that prison. And that's who he was known as from that day on. A dude you could slap around. A dude you could take stuff from and not pay back. The dude that got the slapped out of him at another compound and checked in. Had Turtle been in the cell with somebody that was like Turtle, somebody that was like-minded, somebody that wouldn't stand up for themselves, oh, the boys would have came in there and made them pack it all up. Both of y'all can run all that. Both of y'all got this larceny. Both of y'all involved. They done rolled them both up, took all that stuff. The only thing that saved him from that was the fact that he was in the cell with me. I was known in there. I wasn't the biggest, baddest, tough guy. Dudes had seen me fight. Dudes knew I would fight. There had been several different occasions where I had fought. They knew that coming in there and trying to do anything in my house was going to cause problems. It had nothing to do with Turtle. It had to do with the disrespect I was going to take if y'all came in here and tried to do it. The dude he owed money to was somebody I rocked with, was somebody that was from my city, that's from Richmond. That if it came push to shove and I had issues and Richmond backed me, he was going to be in that crowd of dudes. Just on the strength of who I was is what kept them dudes from coming in that cell.
But had I not said nothing, had I just stood by, or they'd have walked right by me and packed his and my stuff up. Had I been turtle in the past, let anybody slide on trying to take something from me. Let anybody owe me and not go collect my money, I could have easily become turtle. Anytime my stuff was owed to me, I went and got it by all means necessary. Even if it sounds petty, and at times it was petty. You ever fought somebody over three ramen noodles and two sodas? I have. It's stupid. You ever fought with somebody over some toothpaste? I have. It's stupid. But in there, it's not about the value. It's not about how much of something it is. It's all about the principle. It's about the perception. It's about you letting the next man do something to you and everybody else seeing it as an opportunity to do the same thing. What you do today matters tomorrow. What you do today is going to matter two years down the line. In those moments, no matter what you want to do, you better do what you have to do. That is keeping people up out your cell. Pressure shows up at your door. Dealing with the next man's stupidity. Hope y'all enjoyed that story. Happy Monday. Beginning of the week. I had a good day at work. As you can see, I am now home. Throughout the work day, I do what I can to put these videos together and let me say I love this. But anyways, these jail tent centers, these facilities, these prisons, turtle, they're all just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in and as always y'all know what i'm doing i'm just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained and like always this is jay williams let's live life and to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching y'all still watching me man y'all know how we do salute